Thanks for your interest in Simulation X. I'd like to give you a brief demo of the software. So when you open it, you'll see a welcome screen, uh, which will have some links for you that will be very useful for the first times you use it. Uh, there's some first steps to get you uh, used to working with the software. Um, several different tutorials you can use to learn how to build models and simulate them. A full set of samples of different types of libraries and physics and domains and industries that you can go through to, to understand how the, the models and the elements work with each other, and then also release notes to compare the changes between versions. So when you open the software, this is what you'll see. Um, on the left-hand side is a library bar, in the middle is a large modeling area, and then on the right-hand side you have access to different types of windows, like the result windows manager, filter and navigation, and other things that will become useful. As we, become, as we become more adept with the software. Simulation X is a multi-physics system simulation software. And what that means is that you have collections of elements that represent different types of physical behavior. So you'll see there's a bunch of different mechanical libraries here. There are different types of ele electrical libraries, pneumatics, hydraulics, thermal controls, and so on. Because it's a multi-physics system simulation software, you're able to model the subsystems, a hydraulic subsystem, together with a mechanical subsystem, together with controls, for instance, all in the same model, and observe the interactions between these different physical systems. We also say it's a dynamic simulation software, and I'll show you what that means with a very trivial example. So just so that you can see how we start working with the software, I'm going to build up a small model. I'm going to go into the linear mechanics library and grab a mass and a spring damper. And just with drag and drop, I can bring those elements into my model and I connect the system together by clicking and dragging from one port to another. If you double click on an element, a parameter dialog will open where you have access to the different properties of that element. So you can see here we have the stiffness, the damping. There will be some drop-down menus where you can choose between different types of calculations. And you'll also see different tabs that you can go through depending on the element and its complexity. There will also be a results uh, tab on each parameter dialog. This is one way you can get access to the results. Uh, personally, I use a different way. For this simple model, I'm just going to lower the spring stiffness a little bit so that we can see the oscillations over one second. And then I'm going to go into the mass and take a look at that parameter dialog as well. So you can see here we have a parameter for the mass, but we also have a little bit of a different kind of parameter. These are initial values. And that's what I meant before with a dynamic system simulation software. So behind each of these elements are differential equations that describe the behavior describe the physics of that element. So in this case, we have differential equations for these variables, and we need to set initial values for them so that the system knows where to start. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this mass and extend the spring one centimeter. Now when you're choosing a unit, if you hold down the shift button, the value will remain the same when the unit changes. If you don't hold down the shift button, it will convert the value to based off of the difference in units. Okay, so I have now extended the spring one centimeter and I'm going to turn on all the result variables. There's different ways of doing it. If you want to see specific ones, you can just click on the, the red icon or on the, on the variables you want to see in the results tabs. Since this is a small model, I'm going to turn on all result variables and we call them protocols. So all protocols from the selected elements will be turned on in this model. Okay, now I press simulate, and what you'll see at the bottom, this is of course a small model, so it was essentially an instantaneous calculation. But what I can do now is right-click on any of these elements and go to their transient results. So I'm going to plot the displacement of this mass over time. All right, so I can also adjust the unit here in the axes. There's different operations. Well, if you get a second variable in here, then you can also do a y of x curve or change the axes. We can, there's all sorts of different operations and ways to show results that you can go through um, 
yeah, and that are also documented. For now, I'm just going to use one of these functions. I'm going to take this freeze function and just click on that, and that will freeze these results in the window. And now I can reset the simulation and change something. So I'm going to go back to that spring damper, and I'm going to adjust the spring stiffness. I'm going to make it 10 times stiffer and simulate again. And immediately we can see how the system behavior has changed. So that, that is the, the basic concept of using Simulation X. We're able to very quickly build up different system architectures to try out components from different suppliers, to try out distant, different system parameters, and understand how it affects the overall system behavior. Of course, this is a, a trivial model. But it becomes more interesting once we uh, switch to larger models with multiple physics. So let me open up an example of one of those. Okay, so I've opened up a more complex model uh, that will give us further insights to the use of the software. And this model is of a wheel loader that's been built using CAD import. So while I'm speaking, I'm just going to simulate the model so that we're able to observe some results and before I'm going to turn on all of the result variables as well so that we can take a look at anything we want to. Okay, so you can see down here this uh, larger model is going through a few steps. First it's going to run a, a global symbolic analysis and what's happening there in the background is it's collecting the equations from all of these different elements and putting them into an equation system that can be solved by the solver. And then it's going to go through the solving process, find initial values and continue for each for each time step. What we see here in this model are um, elements from three different libraries. We have in yellow multi-body system elements, so that's representing the 3D mechanical system. And if I click on these, you can see highlighted on the right-hand side which element that, um, or yeah, which, which part of the loader each of these elements represents. Down here in green, we have a hydraulic system. So we have a tilt cylinder and a lift cylinder and the control valves. And in blue, we have the control system. This model was originally built to be driven by an operator in real time so that you could, it was connected to joysticks and he could drive the model around in the software. Now for this demonstration, we've we've removed that the joystick connection and instead just given pre predefined commands of where the loader should drive and dump. So as it's going here, you can see that this is a, a 3D model with an animation, but the important thing to know is it's not about the animation. It's not just an animation. As you could see, there were arrows there, as it was that also within the animation. And those arrows are representing the forces exerted by the loader on the ground at that particular time point. So behind each of these different elements, we have a calculation of what forces and torques, uh, velocities and accelerations, the different parts of the loader is exposed to. Likewise, on the hydraulic side, in the cylinders, we have access to the, the hydraulic pressures on both sides, to the flow rates. It's possible to turn on thermal analysis as well so that we have the temperatures at the different points of the hydraulic cycle. And of course, we also have access to the entire control system and what is going on there as well. So let's just take a quick look at the a few of the results here. So for instance, we can take a look at the bucket position here as well as based off of the global coordinate system. And here the vehicle position, we can see the, the route it drives basically over this terrain. Now I could go into each of the elements if I wanted to see, for instance, I wanted to take a look at the cabin. Then I can go in here and take a look at the some of the position variables or the acceleration variables. And maybe I'm interested in what sort of vibrations the 
the uh, driver is exposed to. Now in this particular case, of course, we're on, on completely flat ground, um, so the only sort of vibrations are from, let's say, the, the loads itself. Um, but if this is a, a common use case for this kind of model is that you would be able to drive the loader over uneven ground um, and simulate the effect that different suspension systems have on the comfort of the operator as those vibrations are transferred from the tires up to the seat rail. Likewise, we can go into the hydraulic system. Perhaps we're um, designing um, an, an electrified loader and we want to make sure that our, um, our power system, our electrical systems are going to be able to provide the necessary power and, and force to accomplish the the design um, intent of the loader. So we can go into the tilt cylinder here, for instance, and take a look at what the pressure is on in the, the A side and the B side. We can go into the, the valve and take a look at what the flow rates are, what the valve stroke is. Um, and understand how it's being controlled. Maybe we can adjust our control uh, to achieve a better performance. There's many different ways that we can use this model to get insights into the design, to try do a very large variant analysis of different uh, parameters, of different components, um, of different system architectures, and to create virtual prototypes that save us both time and save us money by avoiding real prototypes. Okay, so that's a very brief intro to modeling and simulation here. I do want to point out a few other things uh, before we end this demonstration. So you'll notice that there are several different ribbons up here. Most of the time, it's sufficient to work with this when you're getting started. We have the simulation controls here. Uh, probably you'll be sticking to transient simulation, although you can also, there's other methods as well, including steady state and fault tree analysis directly in the tool. There are different types of solvers available. Um, BDF or CVODE is typically sufficient for your first for your first um, for your first attempts and there is documentation uh, as to what is which solver is suitable for what kind of problem if you're interested in going into more detail into that. When you're doing the modeling you'll also see uh, different types of uh, import processes. Simulation X, all of the model elements are built off of the Modelica language. That is an open standard language um, that is uh, maintained by the Modelica Association. We also fully support the FMI standard, so you're able to both import and export FMUs. Uh, you can import CAD assemblies. There are many other different features here, including creating state machines. Uh, for now, I am going to keep this short and let you explore those on your own. On the simulation tab, perhaps one important point is that you're able to record the simulation um, because sometimes it takes place very quick and you're not actually able to observe animations either in the diagram view or in the 3D view. If you press this record button, you have access to the animation after and can play it in real time or control the speed at which it's played back. There are uh, additional analyses. This is uh, one particular strength of this tool. You can go into natural frequencies and mode shapes. You can do an order analysis, a fault tree analysis. Um, and here you have access to a large variance wizard. If you do want to try out some parameter studies, this is a simple way of getting it done. There are also more complex ways, such as using um, the task manager or, as you, uh, or by using um, the COM interface where you can control simulation next functionality from any scripting language such as Python. Here, for instance, in the variance wizard, if I did want to create a batch simulation, I could choose parameters here that I want to vary. I'll do one just to demonstrate. Let's take the diameter of the piston. I can set here the range, <clears throat> select also other parameters and set other ranges. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that will create a, a list of 
variate variance that will be calculated. Here then I can select different types of results that I would like to see and um, have those saved afterwards uh, to be analyzed. So I can do that as a text file for each result or there are various different formats that I can save to analyze the batch simulation afterwards. So one more point, um, there's significant uh, opportunities to export the models as well. So you can see that with the code export wizard, you're able to export the model as C code, as an executable model, a Simulink S function to NI platforms, various other platforms, and importantly, uh, also as an FMU using standards 1.0, 2.0, in version 4.2 of Simulation X and very soon also version or FMI standard 3.0 in coming versions. These last tabs I'm going to um, skip over for now. You can see there's quite a lot of functionality there that you have available as you continue working with the software and become adept with it. A few important things I want to point out. One is that there is an e-learning right up here. And this will give you access to basically a self-learning course, course where you're able to go through a tutorial and um, test your knowledge and get those first steps into working with the software. So I do suggest you check out this e-learning right here as you begin. Second, there's a help center here. Um, so this, this is also a good way to get started. The documentation Every element is documented. You can get access to that documentation via the Help Center or through this Help button that you will see in the parameter dialog of every element. When you click on that Help button, the, the documentation will open in a browser window. In this case, it opened on a different screen. Um, and here you can get access then to both the help for that element as to as well as all of the other elements in Simulation X and then other basic sort of documentation for the types of interfaces and analyses and that sort of thing. Finally, if you go here to the file menu and to samples, then you will get access to the sample browser. And this is a collection of 550 samples um, where you can go through and sort that by domain, by industry, by application, and really find that those samples that represent the type of simulations you want to do so that you can get an idea of, or you have already have a basis model that you can build off of and start working with. If you are struggling with the filters here, then there's also a search button here where you can give in uh, a keyword of something that you're trying to simulate, and that will automatically find the, the sample models that are relevant to that keyword. Okay, so that was a brief introduction into modeling and simulation with Simulation X. I hope it was useful for you, and if you're interested and have further questions, we'd be very pleased to hear from you.